Hi everyone and welcome back. Today's video is going to be a follow up from my unboxing video of the Orion Optics UK CT10, the new scope I've just bought. So the video is going to be about my first thoughts and also my first light with this scope. I've um, started to get some of my images printed up at last and uh, I'm really pleased with the results. So what I'd like to do now is uh, show you the scope and then I'd like to share my first light with you. And I've gone for something a little bit special. It's actually a seldom image target, the Pac-Man Nebula. My name is Glenn. Joe's and Astro Photo has just done that. What, the Pac-Man? It'd be all right. So anyway, my... The DSO imager. What, James? Right, okay. And Chuck's Astrophotography. And, and Chuck's done it too. Um, so, um, join me tonight while I take uh, my first light with a CT10 on the rare target NGC281. My name's Glenn and you're watching Astroboak. What I want to know is, are you watching all their channels and not mine? So I recently bought a brand new scope, which was an Orion Optics CT10, which is a carbon fiber, uh, ultra Newtonian 10 inch um, scope. It uh, has a focal length of 1200 millimeters and it's F4.8. So um, it was a scope that I'd looked at online and I was looking at a few different types of scopes. I was looking at an Edge HD, um, I, I was looking at all different types. Um, one of the biggest problems with the Edge was I couldn't get one. Um, it was a really hard scope to get hold of. But I've always had um, a fondness of Newtonians. I know some people don't like them, they don't like the collimation, etc. But ever since I owned my Skywatcher 130 PDS, I've always really enjoyed using it. I actually enjoy collimating a scope and tweaking about and everything. I think there's uh, an appeal there of trying to get the best out of a piece of equipment you've got. And I really like that, you know, tweaking about, getting things just spot on. And then when you get a really good image at the end of it and great results, um, it, it, you really get a sense of achievement. I do find with this hobby that although I'm absolutely amazed by the images that can be taken and what's up in space, one of the big draws for me is the challenge and all of the equipment and the difficulties that you face in this uh, hobby and having to overcome them and problem solving. And I really enjoy that aspect. And that was one of the reasons why I also ended up doing YouTube. Um, I do like problem solving. I do like coming up with solutions and I wanted to share what I'd learned and what I know. So if I can share and help other people do the same, then that's a really good thing. I've just made my life difficult by uh, adding, making videos into my hobby, but I like to keep busy, so it's uh, not a bad thing. So the CT10, what do I think of it? Well, I absolutely love the look of the scope. It's absolutely gorgeous, it's so well made. Um, the carbon fibre might not be to everyone's taste, but I really like it. Um, the carbon fibre construction, it's actually a sandwich, there's two tubes, um, so that's why it's the similar weight to the steel tube um, version, the VX10. Uh, but obviously being double skinned, it's got uh, better thermal stability um, and carbon fiber being a very strong substance, you know, you're gonna be having minimum uh, flexure and changes in that tube, especially when you're going to something that big. So it's uh, just over a meter long and it's 10 inch wide. So um, yeah, it, it, it seemed the right way to go. It was a bit more expensive buying the carbon fiber one, but I'm really happy with it. One of the biggest challenges I had uh, with the scope, obviously my first one was, will it fit in my observatory, which it did. 
just. Um, but it slews absolutely fine. Meridian flip, no problem. Everything's been superb. The only thing I had to change was the park position, which is no issue at all. I use a custom park position in EQ Mod. If you haven't seen the previous video, check it out because I actually show how you do that in that video. I'd say the biggest challenge I've had with the scope was balancing it. So uh, it was on quite a nice big dovetail plate. It gives you a certain amount of movement, but I had to move the scope within the rings to get the balance. And I got everything balanced on the deck and the RA quite quickly, it wasn't too much of a problem. But the third axis balance was difficult. So I'd get it balanced, it wasn't falling left or right, but then I'd have the scope in the home position and it was it was weird it was like um i'd be balancing it i push it one way and it'd actually fall quicker to the say to the right than it would to the left and it was like but that that sort of makes you feel like it's out of balance and then i it, for a while it made me think that my actual mount uh level was out but it wasn't it was it was just a very fine tune needed in the twisting of the tube in the rings just to get everything balanced um, so it took me a little while, it's not the easiest of scopes to move about within the rings to be fair, so um, it was a little bit of work but got it all done and it's balanced nicely now. The um, focuser that comes with the scope is really nice, really smooth, uh, lovely, uh, lovely action. I had a bit of problem with one of my uh, coma correctors, I've got a Skywatcher reducing one. It's got a large flange on the end. And what it means is with that in all the way, and I've got my 55 millimeter backspace, I can't achieve focus. It needs to be in a little bit further. Um, with my Beta MPCC, not so much of a problem because there's no flange on that or the one that's there can be unscrewed and so it slides in a bit more. We are only talking about 10 mil and then I can get focus, no problem. So I'm gonna have a look at the Skywatcher one. I don't know if that flange can unscrew. Um, I've even considered possibly cutting it off or grinding it off, we'll see. I'll um, upset a few people I'm sure if I start taking a grinder to uh, astrophotography gear, but needs must. So uh, I just think the 0.9 reducer that would give me a focal length of 1080 and would reduce and would actually speed the scope up to f4.3. So I think it would give some nice benefits. Um, the bait is performing well with the scope, no problems with the star field, which you will see when you see my first light. Um, quite pleased with the results on that. Uh, I put the off-axis guider on um, with my filter wheel and my ZWO uh, 294mm Pro, which I've done to take my first light. All went in really nicely, no problems at all. And the only other change I've made to the scope is I turned the focuser controls round so that the fine focus was up the top end and then on the uh, coarse focus end removed the knob and I've actually fitted the ZWO uh, electronic automatic focuser. It went on without any issues whatsoever and is working perfect so I've now got um, electronic automatic, automatic focusing with that scope which is great. Um, I collimated the scope. The scope um, is big and um, it's taken me a little bit to get used to. Uh, if anything, I found it a little bit intimidating at first. And I'm sure some of you have got scopes that make that look like a guide scope. But um, for me, it's a big scope. So before that, uh, all I had was um, a Skywatcher 130 PDS. And before that, I had a Zenith Star 61. I did own a Richie Kretchen uh, RC8. Um, by Altair Astro which I absolutely loved it was a lovely scope but I've sold that on so with the reducer that was giving me a focal length of 1200 and when I bought this scope I just knew that I would be using this scope not the other one and if I want further reach I actually want a lot more than the 1600 that the RC8 was giving me um, I would want something more like um, an Edge 9.25 or something like that so that will be what I'll go for in the future should I need the uh, further focal length. With the uh, 130 I will still be using that, I've got an HEQ5 Pro which I move about in my garden and I will be putting the 130 PDS on there and still using it and what I thought I might even do is a comparison shootout between the CT10 and the 130 PDS. Not a very fair contest I'm sure but it might be an interesting comparison. If you'd like to see that, let me know.
um, and I'll definitely put that video together. Could be, uh, could be a bit of fun, although I've got a feeling that the results may be obvious. I mean, if the 130 PDS beats the CT10, I've just spent a lot of money on a bit more focal length. I could have saved my money and bought a bar line. When I was doing my unboxing, one of the first things I opened up was an envelope that had one of these in it, which is a Zygo uh, Wavefront Analysis Report. This is included whenever you buy a scope from Orion Optics and it's a really nice touch and it gives you a full breakdown of the quality of the mirror that you've bought that's in your uh, telescope. Let's just jump online and I'll just show you a few details on it. So the main thing that it, uh, it shows you a lot of information but the important number is the Strel number um, and from what I've read online um, one would be a perfect mirror, zero would be the worst. But basically, if you have a mirror with a strel rating or strel ratio of 0.9, that would be a good mirror. If you have a rating of 0.95 or above, that's extremely good. Now the rating for the mirror that Orion Optics produced for me is actually 0.987. And from what I've read online, that's basically up in the high levels and an exceptional mirror. So I'm extremely happy with that. Um, it means my money was well spent and I've got an extremely nice optics. So um, I know that you can get Zygo Wavefront Analysis Reports done. Um, I think I don't know how much they are to uh, have your telescope tested, but uh, you can get these done if you want to find out how good your optics are. But this is included with the Orion Optics UK uh, scope and uh, a really nice touch, so uh, I'm very pleased with that. The only other thing I added when I ordered the scope was uh, because of the design of the scope being a sandwich, like two tubes, you could have um, heating elements built in to the actual scope. So rather than having to wrap a dew tape around the rear of the scope to help keep the primary mirror free from dewing up, you could actually have it all inbuilt and uh, the wire just comes out the back of the scope and I can plug that straight into my Pegasus power box and uh, have auto dew on and that will keep the uh, scope clear of dew. Um, I am thinking of making a dew shield for the front of the scope and maybe even adding to that a dew strap. Um, not that I think it necessarily has to have one, but I do think the extra weight at the front will again allow me to slide that tube back a little bit further, get it more centrally placed in the uh, observatory, which will be a lot nicer for me. Um, it, as I say, it works fine, but it is tight in certain places and I have to think about how I'm going to move it about. So it would be really good to get it in a nice central position, um, make life a little bit easier moving around. I can see myself uh, cracking my head on that at some point. Anyway, I've absolutely loved using the scope. I can see that I'm going to have so much fun with it. It's a, it's a fairly big lump. It's not going to go on my HEQ5 Pro, so it's going to permanently be a setup now in my observatory. So there you have it. They're my basic thoughts about the scope. Um, and I'm about to share with you my first light. If there's anything you'd like to know, uh, something I haven't covered, something you'd like to know, a question you'd like to ask, stick it in the comments section below. I do try and answer all of my uh, comments. I'd like to thank you all for your support, it means so much. Uh, the fact that you're all coming along with me on my astrophotography journey is really great and uh, I enjoy putting out the content to you all and I hope you enjoy it. Um, so, all that's left is for me to share my first light with you of the Pac-Man Nebula. There's been a few recently, but it's nice. it was nice actually to have some really good images about for me to compare how this was going to um, do against the other images. Um, and uh, it hasn't disappointed me. So I hope you enjoy the final image. And um, until next time, well, clear skies and take care.
Uh, uh, you don't get a five stand there and watch me. I can't concentrate. Oh, just give me a minute. Hi everyone and welcome back. I hope you're all well. <laughs> my, my son's staring at me. Anyway, and Chuck's astrophoto. And Chuck's done it as well. Chuck's astrophoto. Okay. <laughs> So, no, it's okay. It's easy. It's not. It's really hard to. Do, uh, um, the Aurora. Well, one of the things I really love about this scope is the. Um, oh, that's good, isn't it? Sounds like I really love it. I can't even think what to say. The word is Iran. Orion. The word is Orion Optics UK. Oh, God, my coffee's gone cold. <laughs> <laughs>